Hello YouTube! We are on the Real Programming channel. It's about HTML and CSS. My name is Andre. This is our 48th lesson. I greet you. We will talk about let's make these changes to the font size in Tony's web page and finish talking about how should I specify my font sizes. Let's look at how this all works. First, you will set a size for your body element. Then you set all the other font size related to that size like this. That gives you a document 3 that looks like this. The font size of H1 is 150%, the font size of body. We have set H2's font size to 120% of this parent size. The P doesn't have a font size value set, so by default it inherits the body font size. Now, let's say you want to increase the size of the fonts on the page, or perhaps the user does. Then you get a tree that looks like this. How let's you say decide to make your font size bigger, or the user makes the font size bigger using the browser. All your other elements automatically get bigger too without you having to do a thing. H2 is still 120% the size of the body font size. In this case, it's 120% of large. Now, the body font size has changed to large and everything else has changed too. In relation to the body font size, that's great because you didn't have to go through it and change all your other font sizes. All you had to do was change the body font size. And if you are a user, everything happened to behind the scenes. When you increased the text size, all the text got bigger because all the elements are sized relative to one another. So the page still looks good a larger font size. So let's make this change to the font size in Tony's web page. It's time to try, to try this font sizes in Tony's web page. It uh, add uh, the new properties to the journal CSS file in the chapter 8 journal folder. Once you made the changes, reload the page in the browser and check out the differences in the font sizes. If you don't see a difference, check your CSS carefully for errors. Following our site, we are using a font size of small for the body element. This will act as a base font size and we'll set the other fonts related to the body font size. In this case, for of which one, we'll try a font size that has 220% of the base font size. We'll make the H2 font size smaller than H1 or 130% of the body font size. Exercise, sharpen your pencil. If you're specified H2, H1, H2, uh, font size using gem rather than percentage, what would their values be? Answer H1 would be 2.2gem and H1 1.pgem. Test driving the font sizes. Here is the evolving journal, complete with new smaller fonts. Check out the differences. Here is the previous version before the change in font sizes. Here is uh, the new version with uh, update fonts. The design is starting to look a little less clunky. This H1 heading uh, looks much better now. It's bigger than the H2 headings, but doesn't uh, overwhelm the body text and the page inside. The body text is the text smaller. The default body text font size is usually 16 pixels, although it does depend on the browser, but it still is readable as a small resize, which is probably about 20 pixels. The H2 heading is a bit smaller too and is a good size compared to the H1 heading. There are no dumb questions. So, by defining a font size in the body element, I am somehow defining a default size for the page. How does that work? Yes, that's right.
by setting font size in your body element, you can then define the other font sizes of your elements in relation to their parent. What's so great about that? Well, if you need to change the font size, then all you need to do is change the font size and everything else will change in proportion. Do we really need to worry about users resizing their browser fonts? I never do that. Yes, almost all browsers allow their uh, users uh, to make their text of a page bigger or smaller and many users take advantage of these features. If you define your fonts in a relative manner, then your users will have no trouble doing this. Just be careful not to use pixel sizes, because some browsers have problems resizing those. I like this idea of using pixels, because then my page will look exactly like I specified. There's some truth to that by using pixels for every element's font size, you are choosing the precise font size you want for each element, but you do that at the cost of giving some of your users the ones use an older version of Internet Explorer. The flexibility to pick a font size that is appropriate for their display and eyesight. You also are creating pages that are a little header of main intern because if you suddenly want to increase the font sizes of all the elements in a page, you have a lot of changes to make. What's the difference between yam and percentage? They seem like the same thing. They are basically two different ways to achieve the same thing. Both give you a way to specify a size related to the parent, parent font size. A lot of people find percent easier to think about than yam and also either to read in your CSS, but you should use whichever you want. If I don't specify any font sizes, do I just get the default font sizes? Yes, and what uh, those sizes are depends on your browser and uh, even the version of the browsers you are running. But in most cases, uh, the default body font size will be 16 pixels. And what are the default sizes for the headings? Again, it depends uh, on the browser, but in general, H1 is a uh, 200% percentage. All the default body text font size H2 is 150% h3 free is 120 well 20 percentage sorry h4 is 100 percent uh, h5 is uh, 90 percentage and x h6 is uh, 60 per percentage notice that by default h4 is the same font size as the body font size and h5 and uh, h6 are smaller so, rather than using the size keywords, can I use uh, yam or percentage in the body rule? If I use 90% for the font size of the body, what does that mean exactly? It's 90% uh, of what? Yes, you, you can do that. If you specify a font size of 90% in your body rule, then that would be 90% of the default font size, which uh, we just say it is usually 16 pixels. So. 90% would be about uh, 14 pixels. If you'd like a font size uh, slightly different, then the, the keywords provided go ahead and use percentage or yam. Three seems to be so many differences between browsers, font family, font sizes, various default settings, and so on. How will I ever know if my design looks good on other browsers? Great questions. Uh, uh, the easy answer is that if you follow, follow, follow the guidelines uh, in the chapter, that then most of your designs are going to look just fine in other browsers. However, you should know that they may look uh, slightly different in different browsers. The fonts may be slightly bigger or smaller, spacing here and there may be different, etc. But all the differences should be very minor and should not affect the readability of your pages. However, if you really care about having your pages looking almost identical in many browsers, then you really need to test them in most of browsers. 
and to really take this uh, to the extreme you will find a very variety of CSS hacks to try to make different browsers behave the same if you want to take it this far there is uh, nothing wrong with uh, that but just keep in mind a lot of these activities take time and have diminishing returns and changing a font's weight we will talk about this in the next lesson and this is our 48th lesson over thanks for watching subscribe to my channel please like share with friends comment eat bananas chocolate and nuts drink more water for the effective work of our brains bye